Welcome to the RSP Film Room. I'm Matt Waldman with the Rookie Scouting Portfolio. Let's take a look at Keaton Slovis, the quarterback out of USC, against Oregon. This was an interesting game because it started off horrific for Slovis, and then there were some things that got better. But was some of that due to the way Oregon played him and with a big lead, or is it because Slovis got off to a bad start? I think it's a little bit of both here. We're going to watch the, this first play of the game, and he takes a three-step drop right here. And at this point, he's looking right all the way. If you notice, pre-snap, you have a single high safety playing close to the right hash, hugging that right hash. But he has a the outside twin receiver playing the numbers, has is even with the cornerback, and has pretty much a good six, seven yards to the boundary working up this go route, up the numbers. This should be thrown. And we're going to see later that Slovis has the gun to throw this ball with pinpoint accuracy at about 50 to 55 yards. So even though it's a challenging opposite hash throw, he has the arm to do it. He should have taken this. He doesn't take this. Instead, he looks to the inside. And because he looks inside, he probably checks the outside, sees that, and doesn't take it, and should have. Now he looks inside, and the defender here has good leverage. He's playing tight over the top of the out route, or the route breaking outside to the flat. And he could either come over the top here or stay in trail and then cut off the pass from the back shoulder of the receiver. So Slovis notices that and works back to the middle. Now working back to the middle, you have an official here in the middle of the field and that kind of clouds his ability to be able to target his receiver breaking here. And there's you know, pretty tight coverage on this side too where the defender can also come from a uh, trail perspective and cut off at the back shoulder here. So Slovis doesn't take that route either. And at this point, he starts to feel the pressure. He slides outside, knows that nothing's open, and throws the ball away. I love that he throws the ball away here, but I, it's too bad that he misses this wide open opportunity here. I mean, look at the, def you know, the receiver and the defender. This is open by NFL standards, and he looks elsewhere. And that's the thing that he's going to have to get better at. You're going to see as a, a rule in this quarter, he has some really difficult times within this quarter of identifying what's open and what's not open. And this is open, and he should have thrown it. One of the other things that I see with Slovis in this game that concerned me is that he can be induced to making poor decisions or executing poorly against pressure. And certainly that can happen with every quarterback, but when it's the second play of the game, that's a little bit more concerning compared to, say, dealing with constant pressure throughout a quarter, a series, or a half. This is the second play of the game. Takes a drop back there, takes that step, looks to his, you know, right, his left side. And, you know, you can see there's good leverage here by both defenders on the outside and inside. He reads that effectively and decides not to throw the ball. Now, you might say this looks open, but the defender's so tight he can come downhill here. So, Slovis doesn't go there. He comes back to the middle. This is well covered. So, what does he do? Well, he starts to feel some pressure. And he hurries his feet and doesn't fully get his feet under him to make this little check down throw. And he ends up throwing the ball at the feet of the running back. And you're going to see it here from this, per this perspective. And you're going to watch again. Look to his left. Decide not to throw that ball, which was a good thing. Looks to the middle. That's closed off to him as well. And watch his feet. See how, how this front foot never moves? He's not throwing from a balanced position. And because he's not in a balanced position and tries to throw this ball, the ball just sinks to the ground. He's going to have to be quicker with his feet. His feet have to be really the, the supports for his eyes. If the eyes and feet are not in sync when you're making decisions, it's going to lead to unforced errors because the feet don't give you the preparation to throw the ball the way you need to. And so he rushed this process and he winds up with a bad result. We talked earlier about Slovis 
understanding what's open and what's not open and what and having difficulty with that in this first quarter you're going to see it here inside shade defender generally when you have a safety playing low you have linebackers inside here you have a one-on-one -on -one with the defender on the outside when it's this so it's off coverage but it's man-to-man -man. slovis when he takes the drop back you get pressure up the middle you have a man guarding the flat here. So you know he's looking at this outside man as the best option to the right side. And when he sets his feet, look at the defender. The defender is squatting over top of this route, ready to come downhill before the receiver makes his break. So unless the receiver is running a double move and is going to run right by him, Slovis shouldn't, should know that this is not open and move on to the next route. And you could see that he could move to his left here or start to avoid the pressure that's coming up the middle here and make a move towards the outside or throw the ball away. Instead, he continues looking at this route, hoping somehow it's going to come open. And he decides to throw the ball. Look at the defender. It's totally covered. He needs to understand the leverage. And he can start this over here. When he begins to finish his drop here, he should look at this and know this is covered. If he can't recognize this is covered, that's trouble. And it is trouble because now he decides to throw the ball anyway. Defender comes inside, cuts off the route, makes the catch, interception, takes the ball all the way back to basically the 19-yard line plus a face mask penalty tacked onto it with the attempted tackle. And the Oregon Ducks are in shape to be able to score at this point. It's a game-changing play early on because of the fact that he does not recognize this as covered at the top of his drop right here should have moved on throw the ball away at the very least then there's the concept of getting into quicksand because they get the ball back they're down by seven he's already thrown an interception that's you know led to an Oregon score he seems to have had difficulty finding who's open and, and targeting people who are not well, it's getting to him a little bit early on in this game because you can see he has the shift to back to the inside, drops back, looks to his right, and looks to his back, Stephen Carr. You can see that he had, there's a linebacker over the top who's sliding in the flat to cover, and he decides to come off it because he doesn't think it's open. That's why he turns back to the inside. He's got mesh going on over here, and number eight is open for him to be able to throw that ball to number eight. But he doesn't trust what he's seeing because he decides he's going to push the issue with a covered receiver on the outside that he already should have just forgotten about. Should have left alone, taken number eight. Instead, he continues and finishes his drop looking back to the right after a brief look to the inside and throws this ball. If the defender is already over top and, you know, with the... The receiver and you're gonna to have to throw this ball pin it into the sideline yeah it's well covered and it's gonna require a perfect throw when you have a wide open man in number eight right here that you can get you know open at five yards you're gonna have Drake London be able to block off number 23 or at least run some interference here and you have a better you have a safer shot with number eight especially backed up in the end zone so if you didn't trust the route right here and you're going to come off it or hesitate once and then you see it right here this isn't open either second play doesn't recognize what's open and what's not open really third play third play out of four at this point either Slovis is completely discombobulated conceptually about what's going on because he's made multiple mistakes and he's not reading seeing coverage accurately or he just has difficulty with game management because here he is backed up in his own territory. And you see there's potential blitz coming late pre-snap. You see some edge pressure on the right side too, as well as the left. And Slovis, you know, takes a snap, drops back three steps, and the outside, the edge man takes an inside move. And he's looking downfield, nothing's open. As soon as he takes that step, that's when he sees the edge defender working inside. And as a result of that, he now has to avoid him. And he does a great job with the 
Reduction of the shoulder to pull through the reach. Both hands on the ball. Hangs onto the ball. Slides outside. At this point, he needs to throw the ball away. He's backed up here. There's no. You're already down by seven. And you have pressure coming. Throw the ball. Instead, he stops his feet. Tries to avoid the outside men when you know there's going to be backside pursuit. He makes that backside, you know, he makes that outside man miss. Backside pursuit basically slows, you know, basically gets in his way from being able to run a little bit more. And the and he's sacked by the outside man anyway, who he initially made miss, but not completely. So let's look at it from here. Gets outside. Should have just tried to throw it away rather than to avoid 55. Gets wrapped, sacked. Can't take sacks this far back in your own field. Just throw it away now. He had two men out there. He's trying to be a hero at this point. Learn not to be a hero and you'll actually help your team more. Now, not everything's bad with Slovis. Obviously, there's a lot of good things to talk about with this game. He just got off to a horrific start. Now, this is a, just a baby step in the right direction and, you know, in the middle of a, a really awful first two series. But I like the fact you're going to see this as a pattern of his game that when he does feel a pocket compress, he can take an efficient number of steps to create space and then find someone open in the middle of the field. He takes a two quick little step retreat. No, he doesn't turn his back to the defense, keeps his eyes downfield. Sees the receiver working the route London across the middle. And he's able to fire that ball in there and get some positive yards. Here it is from this perspective. Once again, just creating a little space for himself. The subtle little moves you want. Good job right here. Very accurate pass. No problem. Now this play is a completion, but you're going to see... Again, looks outside. Look at the the cornerback. The cornerback is already has his hips turned to the inside, chest inside, running away from the receiver. If you know that your receiver is supposed to run an out route, you know that the receiver has the leverage advantage. So why during your drop after two steps and assessing this that you don't throw the ball here? Don't target the out. If that's your first read, target it. But instead, he comes back, and he does complete the pass. Throws it to London from the slot. High safety room here. Might ideally be a better play. Except, you know, there's three defenders who can converge here as opposed to hitting the single receiver with a one-on-one. -on -one. I would prefer the one-on-one. -on -one, but this was a safer completion, maybe, or an easier completion to take. But this is the throw that you would like to see him make. You know... Instead, he again, it's part of a pattern. It, does he really see what's open? Does he really understand the leverage and position of a defender versus a receiver and what constitutes open and what constitutes covered? I have some questions about that. Now, he gets better with certain points of the game, but his strength of his game right now, honestly, is the shallow middle zone and quick throws outside You know that are basically disguised run plays or you know alternates to run plays but serve as such and here he is throw over the middle here's a good example of a play that gives you some indication that he's probably just a little bit in quicksand right now because after all that's gone on you watch his play and right here the receiver's open he's got a defender moving to the outside one way over top here this is when the ball should come out. He hesitates on the throw and ends up throwing the ball with pressure, getting you know basically compressing the pocket and him taking contact from that bull rush of moving the lineman into Slovis. And that's complete. It's on time. But the fact that Slovis is hesitating on a pretty much wide open throw and deciding not to deliver it, part of that again... Some of that may be that he gets confused about certain looks in terms of leverage of defenders. It's not so much like whether it's zone or man or whether it's a certain type of coverage. It's just the literal leverage and position of the defender he's having issues with. And it's messing with him. It's like his confidence right now is 
a little off kilter for the fact them to hesitate on that play and then have to throw the ball into a little bit of a tighter window. He limited his receiver right there in terms of opportunities to run after the catch, and he took a hit. But progressively, you're starting to see him shake himself free from the concrete of this bad start, you know, where he's or the quicksand of this bad start. Because you see him look on his trip side, and sure, you could argue that maybe this outside man's open, breaking outside, but the leverage of the defender back to the quarterback, chest to the sideline means that the, the defender can come downhill and really, you know, basically work downhill easily to cut off this route. So he does a good job of looking at the, you know, the two players to the outside, determining that this is not open after he brings up the ball a little bit. I'd like to see him come off this earlier, though, because he should have recognized this. That he should be turning at this point. He should have recognized this really about a second before. Right here. He should see that both of these routes are going to close up. But he waits for confirmation until they've already made their breaks. And even sets his feet as if he's going to throw. So again, the recognition is, is getting faster and more accurate. But it's still too slow for the NFL game in this situation. He should be turning back and knowing he has a wide open back here. Or at least he'll assess it a step earlier. If he assessed this now, and if he was turned to the back now and assessed this... He hits the back probably at the 20 with the defender running to him, but the back's at full speed, and this back might end up catching the ball and scoring because the safety is still turned inside. So Slovis, with the slow nature of his assessment, cost himself basically a game-flipping play because, look, wide open. Look at the position of these two defenders. If Slovis were throwing now... This play is basically going to the house. But instead, now he's setting his feet, but doesn't set him. He has, ends up rolling out. So now he's buying time for the safety to come back and recover because he doesn't recognize this as wide open and resets after taking about three steps to the outside. One, two, three. Resets. Now has to fight under pressure. Now throws the ball while he's taking a hit. Airmails the ball, forces the def the runner to have to wait on the ball, and guess who gets to recover the safety and a defender from underneath. And now the now the runner has to make people miss to get basically get back to where he caught the ball, as opposed to. Let's see if we can show it right about here. Right here, if he were just setting his feet and throwing, this is a touchdown. Three steps, reset, too late. And then can't follow through. He left a lot on the field. It was a good play, could have been a great play. And still the cobwebs in effect. Watch him here on the slot. He's going to get a little more daring now and throw this ball on this route breaking to the flat. But the defender's playing over top. What he sees is the defender's chest facing him. So he decides he's going to throw it. But even so, he better place it on the outside shoulder. But he doesn't do that. The defender is able to come downhill, cut that off, nearly cut off the ball here. It's very close. It's a good throw. But again, in the NFL, is the defender going to be a step faster? Two steps faster? Recognize this and bait it a little bit more? Be able to turn be because of his position. He can position himself differently and make it look like the he doesn't that it's not good leverage but be close enough that he can cut this off with a quick change of direction this is again this is an issue where this is good for the college game good enough might not be good enough for the pros on a consistent basis but the raw ability is here and again a lot of people are going to look at this as more refined because you can make plays off script to me this is raw this is backyard football okay and there's value to backyard football there's value to understanding when you're when you take a playoff script what to look for he does a good job here of you know looking to his first read it's covered coming back to the middle of the field second read that's covered third read on field that's covered too looks to the outlet flips you know flashes the ball doesn't like what he sees there 
it's, he's basically in a situation where that's going to be well covered and going for the one-on-one. -on -one. He could do that, but he's kind of giving up on this play. You might even want him to manage it this way because the back has a one-on-one -on -one with the defender. But he doesn't go for that, continues to decide he's going to look back over to his left. And because he has you know, only two defenders here, and I guess he feels like he's going to have a chance to buy some time and space, he does so. Reverses his field, makes the backside defender miss, and now he sees his receiver who is going to be able to work back to the sideline from the flat and really nice throw moving to his left with the defender coming close and to be able to throw this ball and get a first down. So this is a nice play. Is it refined work? No. Refined work is reading coverage, making good management decisions in within the rhythm of the progression-based play. But in this situation, this is valuable but it's, to me, it's not advanced. To me, this is the type of thing you'd see high school quarterbacks do. Um, just maybe not as at a high of a level on a consistent basis in terms of athletic ability. But when we talk about quarterbacks, we often rate them highly because they can make plays like this. But this, to me, is not an incredible play. It's a good buying of time, but it's nothing extraordinary. And it's something that you know, frankly, you know, people are going to overrate a little bit. I like the move and throw the left. That's nice. Good, good job there for sure. But we need to see more from a conceptual timing perspective and understanding how to, to read leverage. And that's something that's been missing right now. This might be the first play I've seen in this game where we see an appropriate read of leverage that's going to result in a big play. Drops back, looks to his right. He's going to hold this high safety here. Knowing there's a high safety and a single receiver here who gets inside leverage against the defender. Slovis holds that safety, drops back, looks, and he sees his receiver has inside shade. And the safety has turned to that opposite side. So Slovis, you know, seeing his hips, with Slovis seeing the defender turn his hips right here at the top of his drop, he now knows he's going to have a one-on-one. -on -one. And when he checks the one-on-one, -on -one, it's wide open. The defender's fallen. He may not have noticed that just yet, but it's about he's going about to notice it. But what he does see is that he has his receiver on the inside and ahead of the defender. So he lets that ball go. Pressure hits him. Doesn't matter. Puts that ball where it needs to be. There's have to slow down a little bit, but no big deal. And the receiver scores on the play. Really nice job here of being able to assess the situation. You know, dropping back, holding the, the defender, the safety here, even manipulating them to turn and move. And once he catches that, flips to that one on one side and it's wide open. And just throws it for the receiver to catch it. So I think he knows that the defender fell down here because he took something off the ball to make sure that the receiver could have an easy catch and not get forced downfield or have to work too hard. And it results in a score. Once again, I'd like to see Slovis do a better job of recognizing leverage. He has a deep linebacker here, kind of more shaded to the left side. Slovis drops back, looking to his left, comes back to look at the safety. Look where the safety's chest is. Facing the left sideline. At this point, Slovis should know that his receiver who's breaking inside is going to be open if he has inside leverage. So when Slovis turns back, he, he, he perceives this pressure off the edge and never gets to look here. And as a result, he retreats and then has to throw the ball away. But if his first inclination wasn't to retreat and was to actually turn after he sees this and just look up field and see it, he gives a slight look here. He should see this and he should climb. When you see this opening, he should be hitching a step and firing the ball. And he'd be firing the ball with maybe the, his you know, interior lineman getting pushed back into him, but it would be open. And he'd probably be able to make that throw before that happens. But he notices the edge pressure. 
the quick little turn and look right here. He looks here. This should this should be enough for him to hitch and throw. Instead, senses that pressure, overreacts to it, slides out to where the pressure is even bigger factor, and has to throw it away. And it costs him a big play. More evidence that Slovis just doesn't trust what he sees. You're going to see him here. Look back to his left. You got a safety on the left-hand side. Finishes his drop. Safety's turned. Again, chest facing that left boundary. He's got two defenders in good position over his receivers. So what does he do? He hitches forward. That's good. He knows he should know where his backside receiver is breaking. And based on this safety's position, he should know that this is going to be open because he knows he has a receiver breaking backside and the defender who's going to be in the best position theoretically to cut off that route is actually taking himself out of position based on his turn. Instead, Slovis turns and he hesitates. And because he hesitates, he's not going to be able to get this ball off. He brings the ball back, feels the pressure, and everything about that was too slow. If right here, he was... It's, I'm waiting a little too long. Right here, hitch, fire. Hitch, turn, fire. Hitch, turn, brings the ball back, brings it down. And then takes a wrap and hit. He could have fired that ball in there. And the fact that he didn't follow through with it, he questioned himself. And that's part of the problem. He drifted into the pressure a little bit too. He didn't need to drift into the pocket. He felt a little bit of the back, that backside pressure off the edge. But he drifted to that side. If he doesn't drift and he just hitched forward. And he should have read everything there early enough that he pivot first and then slide in the pocket. But because he didn't read it fast enough, he, slide, he climbs first, then pivots, and he's created the pressure. And he should have had an open man here that he the ball should have been out by now. And he should have been throwing it a yard further to from his right as opposed to being where he is on the left. He cost himself that sack and the completion. At this point, USC is like, let's let's get some easy throws for Slovis. We got to get some easy decisions for him. So you're going to see here, quick drop, quick two-step drop, get the ball out quick. Does that well. Opposite hash. Accurate, distributes the ball well. That's that's fine. You know, quick distribution outside in the middle of the field, he can do that. But you can't live and die with those plays as an offense. You need to be able to stretch the field. You need to be able to deal with pressure. More missed opportunities. A good play at the end, essentially, but compared to what he missed, not great because you're going to see blitz. You have two men blitzing here up the middle. You have a single high safety. He drops back. The blitz gets picked up well. He's looking to his right. Nothing there. He should see right here as he turns. As he turns, he should catch that the single high safety has his back turned to the slot receiver who has inside shade over the defender that he is covered by. This is an open lane. This should be thrown. He could throw this even further towards the outside and the receiver has the lead to be able to stack and catch if he wants if he's worried about the middle defender otherwise you can throw this right up the seam instead he slides two more steps and at this point what was open he doesn't want to throw he doesn't have the confidence to throw it still could have thrown it this was still wide open he could have thrown this inside at this point and still probably you know just inside the hash, and the safety probably had no chance. But at this point, he climbs, resets. Now he has to look for a check down, throws the ball under pressure, basically gets a two-yard gain on a big effort by the receiver to actually just catch this ball. But just such a missed opportunity. He's missed two big, really three big play opportunities in this game. Three potential touchdowns he's missed in this game thus far. You can see it here. I mean, again... Drops back. It's picked up. That's great. Once he turns here, he should see this defender. Let's see if we can see it from this point of view. Right here. See? That defender's turning and running this way. He should see that. I don't know how he doesn't see that. 
And if he sees that, he probably sees in his periphery the receiver who's got inside shade and has separation. But he slides over top two more steps. And even then, even after wasting two beats to begin to throw this ball, he doesn't do so. It's wide open. This still could be a touchdown. Doesn't do so. Now ends up risking a near sack or, you know, strip almost for a two-yard reception. It's not going to cut it. This here is what Slovis does best. Again, cross blitz inside. In, he's looking over the middle. When he knows the pressure's coming pre-snap and he has time to be able to assess where he's going to go, he'll stand in there in the pocket and make the throw. And he does a good job here of finding that tight zone and hitting Drake London right there. Gives him room to actually catch and turn upfield. Here's another one of those middle of the field throws. And he does a good job here once again. Drops back, sees the underneath defender, is patient. Waits for that underneath defender to get, you know, cleared with the stop and go of London working against the defender over top. And fires the ball right in the window it needs to be between three defenders. Excellent play. And he's dealing with it with a little bit of pressure as well, or at least a, a compressed pocket and push. These plays he can make all day. Short outside throws, you know, on quick throwouts all day. Quick little distributions, that's awesome. Two-minute offense, like he's doing here when the defense is playing this way, fine. It's the tough stuff. It's the, the difference-making plays. That... There's promise here. You're going to see him on this particular play process quickly he knows that he's going to have a wheel route that it's open based on the two defenders stuck here together it's a good tell that when you see two defenders stuck together like this that someone has been left open and he knows who it is fires the ball gets the receiver down to the one and then you can see he's starting to get his timing and confidence back a little bit he drops back there's five men coming with the rush looks to the left side sees the defenders coming outside knows he has mesh Working in the middle, comes back to the middle, finds the open mesh point right here, fires it, gives his receiver a chance to try and get some yards after the catch, and gets close to the marker. Nonetheless, management in and outside the red area or close to the area, red area, or backed up in your own territory and against pressure, pressure can induce him to do some foolish things. Looks to his right, doesn't see anything that he thinks should be open here. So he goes back to the middle. Here's the man. Doesn't fire that ball until late and really shouldn't have at all because of the position the defender has. But feels that backside pressure, rushes the throw. Defender makes an easy, you know, knockdown of the play. This is a promising cr scramble drill. This is the type of play that Mac Jones and Devonta Smith were able to deliver well, even if it wasn't a scramble drill, but based on reading the position of the defender and making the throw to throw a receiver open, Slovis does this on a scramble drill because he drops back, feels the pressure, finds the area of the pocket to flush, and Tyler Vaughns sees that and turns back upfield and starts to run towards the, the corner. And Slovis reading that, but seeing the position of the defender, here we are. Gets a chance to actually read the defender's position and throw accordingly. So you can see that he's capable of doing this, but either it was the first quarter of this game where he just was not playing to his ability or the consistency of understanding what is and what isn't open is just missing with his game too often. And I think it's more the latter. He makes his throw under pressure and watch him throw the ball behind the back of the coverage. And Vaughn is just maybe a beat late to be able to make a play on this ball or may just, just isn't able to, you know, get his hands up on it. But look where the throw is. That's exactly where you want it. Just a, Well, not exact, but close. It's high enough, but Vaughn isn't able to catch that. Devonta Smith might have been able to get that ball. 
it's a nice picture of him reading the defense of leverage and showing what he's capable of doing when his head's right and he's seeing the field right. Here's an example of good decision making, but the execution just isn't quite good enough. You're going to see him drop back. There's the pressure up the middle. Doesn't disturb him. Does a good job of setting up the throw. There's the dig route. 21, Tyler Vaughns. But he puts the ball a little too inside Vaughns. Vaughns has to turn back into the ball and make the catch. The defender's able to wrap and jar the ball loose. Now, should have Tyler, Va Tyler Vaughns should have caught this ball. No question about that. But you can see how close it is in on him rather than where he can extend and make the catch cleanly without a defender being able to wrap up and disrupt it. The execution of this throw that Slovis made just made the reception much harder. At the same time, a saving grace with Slovis that we see on this particular look is that the play after him throwing it too into a receiver, he now deals with a receiver who's tightly covered and throws it only where the receiver can make the catch, low and away. And the receiver does, so, well, almost does so, but it, it ends up in an interference call. But the placement of the ball, pretty much where you want it to be. He makes that play possible, that interference call possible. So he followed up a bad play with a good one and in a difficult situation. So again, this is just, it gives you an idea. These are things I'm going to want to watch more from Slovis. Can he have more good plays than bad? Was this a bad start to his, to a game? Does he have these lapses regularly? Does he consistently come back from bad plays and make good ones? This is not an unbelievably dynamic mover in the pocket, but Slovis can move around. And you see he senses the pressure there. The pressure from the outside and inside. Turns out that the outside drops into coverage. Nobody's coming, but still pressure is arriving from the edges. He doesn't see anything open here, so he does a good job of retreating and sliding a little bit to the outside. Nothing's really that open deep. Nothing's open to the right side. So now he's going to look back to the left. This is a point where you want to see him throw the ball away. He actually throws the ball only where the receiver can make the catch here. And it results in a, in a nice play, you know, for both him and Drake London. Well done. Pretty good decision making here. You're going to see him on a design roll. Looks to his right. This is not open in my opinion. You've got a defender who's able to come downhill playing, riding that back hip. He should be able to cut this off. So he does a, Slovis does a good job of not looking to that route to throw. Comes back to the middle. That's covered. And maybe, yep, looks down to the receiver here on the shallow side. That's covered. At this point, instead of trying to make something happen way back here, even though that's wide open, it, he's not going to be able to get there in time or get the ball there in time for it to remain open. It's going to be an interception. He tries to throw that across his body. Too many defenders are backside for him to be able to negotiate this and get the ball off in time without this defender being able to get back into the area. So instead, does the smart thing in the red zone. Backs away, drifts a little bit, throws the ball away. This is a nice play, and it doesn't work out for him, but he looks to his right a little bit, sees the mesh, looks back to the right a little bit further here, sees that all of that is well covered. So he comes back to his left, and now his receivers start to adjust for him. And you see um, London, excuse me, not London, Tyler Vaughn working the end line, and he sees that, but he also has London come, come, cut across here, who maybe shouldn't have done that because London then leaps for the ball and ends up being contested and it's incomplete. When in fact, if he throws, a, if London isn't there and he throws this to Drake, this is probably an easy pitch and catch for a touchdown because London would be in a position where the, the defender wouldn't have come off and followed him. Still nice recognition of where to throw the ball. I think on the whole, Slovis' drops are a little slow. And I think that, you know, when his foot hits that background, 
the back foot hits the ground. The receiver is at the top of his stem and already turning into his break. The ball comes out after the break. You want the ball to come out at the top of the stem. That gives your receiver the most room. But because the drop is so slow, it's not synced up enough with the route. It could This could be a tick faster and he could be getting the ball out right now instead of getting his feet set. If the ball's coming out here instead of his feet getting set. This is a catch and there's room to be able to make the man miss. Instead, the ball comes out and it's now thrown closer to the boundary and now it's about just catching the ball, which doesn't end up happening. Could have made the, the, the catch easier, the throw earlier, and given the receiver time and opportunity to make the first man miss and get yards after the catch. And again, we have consistency issues dealing with pressure. You have edge pressure off the left side playing that wide alignment he drops back and he sees this right away he sees it out of his periphery and i love what he does here he finishes his drop waits for that defender to get within a step with that by taking finishing the drop and then making a quick spin and you know turn to the outside nothing's open fires the ball away fine but look at the next play wide nine you know wide alignment once again and this time he drops back, and there's the pressure. Same guy, same position, almost the same time in this moment of the two plays. Instead, Slovis tries to do that, but he's not able to avoid it. He's just, he doesn't have his feet set where he needed to. He didn't anticipate it like he did the first play. This one, he's too out of, his feet are too far apart. He's already finished his drop. And he didn't he wasn't able to move fluidly enough to avoid it and it's because he didn't have a plan for this he didn't rec the recognition to action at this point wasn't as fast as the play prior the lesson here that i think a lot of people should gain from this that's a broader point about quarterbacks and not just about keaton slovis is that you have to really synthesize a lot of disparate information to be a great quarterback. And what you see from Kedon Slovis is that he's a good college quarterback. But to be a great NFL quarterback, you have to recognize that you have a safety single high on this right hash. And that means that when you finish your drop and you know that you're going to have an open man inside shade of a, of a defensive back at the left hash and breaking more cross to the inside that if you then finish your drop and can somehow either notice or bait the safety to come downhill and you see the position of the safety here and know that this defender's got his knees bent he's leaning forward that it's going to be hard for him to turn and do a 360 turn and run downhill that when you let this ball go for this outside receiver that you should understand that you can place it more to the opposite hash and let the receiver run under it without and, and reinforce his position, his open position against the outside defender. But because he doesn't put two and two together with the coverage base, you know, of, on the outside and the coverage to the inside, he throws this ball too much to the outside and it gives the defender a chance to be able to make a play. And it's not as accurate as if he threw it. it he would have probably been more accurate throwing it to the inside and a little shallower and letting the receiver run under it. And you're going to see it here. He sees that defender. And then when he starts to look here, he should be able to gauge in the periphery what's happening. He should be able to see this defender and leaning forward. And especially with the hesitation, look at the defender coming forward. He should be able to get that ball out and throw it a little bit more to the inside with number six who, you know, jumped the wrong route instead now it's too far to the outside and into the the defender who can make a play that's the difference between competent college quarterbacking and all pro level nfl quarterbacking at least in this instance it's a nice deep ball 52 yards opposite field not quite there but opposite field safety he sees that Looks to his left, knows that the defender is inside shade so that he has all that room from the numbers to the boundary to throw this ball. Puts a lot of air under it, 
The receiver's just not able to make the play. Let's see if we can see it from this angle. A lot of air under it. Yep, just goes through the receiver's mitts. This should have been caught. Perfect throw. Another good shallow throw in the middle of the field. You're going to see it here. You're going to have pressure. You know, working on a cross blitz. A little delay with it. Stands in there. Sees the receiver breaking here. Just throws the ball a little high. But still it's caught. First down. Poised. Good position. Feels very comfortable in this range of the field. As long as he can see the pressure coming and anticipate it. He has a plan. Seems to be poised enough. When he's not ready for the pressure, here comes the twist. Doesn't expect that coming. Gets away from it. That's not bad. But then here comes the pressure from, you know, from the inside. And he doesn't expect that. Now he's got to run for his life. And instead of throwing the ball away, watch him throw this ball too far inside. Now, I think he's trying to throw this ball away. But he doesn't get the good placement on it. And as a result, the defender nearly intercepts it. This was very close to a, a bad play. Overall, Keaton Slovis has decent arm strength. He can get rid of the ball quickly. He has baseline accuracy that you're looking for thrown on the move to his left or his right. He can extend plays in and outside the pocket. A lot of baseline skills that make him a fairly toolsy quarterback from an NFL draft perspective. Seems to be good with tight zones. Seems to show some promise in the red zone in terms of when to throw the ball away and manage it. But there are enough fine points with his game that have questions and can really lead to difficult play. You know, not understanding the leverage of coverage or not reading it accurately on a on a play-to-play -play basis. Some issues with inducing bad throws due to pressure, not recognizing pressure pre-snap the way that maybe he should. Things he's going to have to show this year at USC to really reinforce a good grade. Otherwise, he's at risk of maybe falling a bit because he gets picked apart some. So it just depends on the season. Can he reinforce that he's continuing to mature from some of the questions I've shown from this game is a, a good example of that. If he can do that, you know, he he might very well be one of the top prospects in this class. If he can't, you're going to see him slide. Thanks again for watching. For more RSP Film Room videos, you can check out my YouTube channel, Matt Waldman's RSP Film Room, and my site, www.mattwaldmanrsp.com.